Hi, we are the Continuum Rover team from the University of Wrocław. In this SAR submission, we would like to show details about our rover Aleph 2. Our rover is built on a base that has been field tested in many competitions, but introduces changes based on lessons learned from competitions, prototyping and testing. Our field tested chassis is made from aluminium and carbon fiber. Powerful motors combined with low sensor of mass give us the ability to effortlessly climb steep terrain. Closed loop PID controllers give us precise control over position and velocity of the wheels. The four wheel rocker suspension ensures that at least three wheels are always touching the ground. This enables us to travel on a very challenging and uneven ground without losing traction. The 5 degree of freedom manipulator has been designed to lift weights of up to 6 kg with a maximum reach of 1 meter while weighing less than 12 kg. The arm is controlled by 6 independent DC motors that transmit torque through planetary gears and belt transmissions. Thanks to precise encoders, we can use inverse kinematics for end effector control, make use of trajectory planning algorithms and display live visualization of the manipulator's position. We have developed many custom PCBs including two power distribution boards, the first one delivering power to high current devices and the second one delivering power to all computers and networking systems, science boards, camera system and other devices. All of the peripherals are connected to the main computer using a CAN bus as a transport layer and our own Ruby protocol as an application layer. Ruby gives us the same abstraction layer over all of the peripherals, automatic GUI generation and fast development. To expand our vision capabilities, we developed custom pan-tilt-zoom-focus camera modules. The camera features include pan and tilt axes that enable us to see in all directions, triple zoom, adjustable focus and switchable infrared filter. We are using 2.4 GHz and 900 MHz for transmission between the rover and the base. In the US, we should have full communication on a range of up to 1 km. Wi-Fi connection allows us to stream high-quality footage from the rover without any noticeable lag and with a lot of bandwidth left for control commands. Our directional antenna can follow the rover to ensure the connection is always available. Thanks to the use of MikroTik routers, we can reroute some specific traffic, like video stream, to a selected communication channel. All of our high-level software is based on the robot's operating system. Our main computer is NVIDIA JSON TX2. The user interfaces for the power distribution boards give us precise power consumption statistics, and they can be used to remotely restart any component of the rover. Our software for autonomous navigation utilizes Kalman filter to calculate the robot's position by combining different odometry sources. A stereoscopic camera is used to detect obstacles. Odometry and the occupancy map are then used to plan a collision-free path to the destination point that can be executed by the local planner, which gives appropriate velocity commands to the rover's control software. The onboard cameras can detect air attacks from a distance of up to 10 meters. A special algorithm has been developed to complete the legs on the autonomous navigation task. A gazebo simulation allows us to test many features of our software without the need of interaction with the real hardware. The simulated rover runs the same set of controllers as the real one, which makes it compatible with the rest of our software. A wide range of open-source plugins gives us the possibility to test different setups of cameras and sensors mounted on the robot. The simulation environment can even be used to test the robot's behavior in Mars's gravitational force. For the science task, we will conduct some non-hazardous chemical experiments on the soil samples that will test for the presence of proteins, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus and calcium. These experiments will help us determine the existence of past or present life. We will also perform different sensor measurements, such as light intensity, air quality and temperature. They will let us determine if the conditions are favorable for living organisms.